my name is Nick Boyle, consultant, upper GI surgeon. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a, is a major problem and, and one I think that's very often um, overlooked. Um, in the United Kingdom, there are probably somewhere between five and 600,000 people who are taking powerful medications, PPIs, uh, to treat symptoms of reflux on a, regularly, uh, a reasonably regular basis. Um, and the issue is, of course, that um, perhaps 20 to 30 percent of those patients will still get significant symptoms which affect their quality of life on a regular basis. And, and they do affect their quality of life. There's data which shows that um, the, the degree um, of suppression of quality of life, um, physical well-being, mental well-being, for instance, is, is, is as bad as it is with other um, long-term chronic diseases such as um, heart disease, for instance, and, and, and respiratory disease. And from a financial perspective, it's a major problem too. There's probably about £500 million spent by the NHS every single year on PPIs and a, believe it or not, quite clear data which shows that uh, a loss of productivity and works lost to reflux. So it has a, a, a financial uh, as well as a personal impact uh, upon society. Well, the most important um, first step in diagnosing patients with, who present with reflux is listen to the patients. There is a, a significant overlap with other um, conditions which originate from the GI tract as well as um, from other parts of the body. So um, you need to, to establish perhaps does the patient have gallstones and biliary disease? Do they have functional dyspepsia? Um, do, or do they have gastroesophageal reflux itself? And then, uh, of course, whilst we all recognize the so-called intestinal uh, symptoms of reflux, which include retrosternal burning, regurgitation of acid, and sometimes food into the mouth, and the, the so-called classical symptoms, we also recognize increasingly that uh, patients can present with non-intestinal symptoms. Um, so largely these can be respiratory, uh, so patients, for instance, with asthma or sometimes chronic disease such as uh, bronchiectasis or fibrosing alveolitis caused by long-term, um, very often silent aspiration of gastric contents into the lungs, um, or perhaps laryngopharyngeal symptoms. Um, a lot of patients will present, for instance, with a cough or what's diagnosed as a post-nasal drip uh, or problems with speaking and dysphonia. And then lastly, um, uh, we've all seen patients who've been sent to, 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 to see us by their dentist because um, they presented with problems with their mouth, uh, recurrent mouth ulcers, or even um, uh, dental caries. Well, I, I think it's, it's really important that one has as much uh, input from people with different um, from different specialties and different skills as possible. Partly, of course, because uh, as, we, as we know, patients can present with classical but also much more difficult to, to um, diagnose type symptoms. Um, and one has got to have access to uh, the diagnostic tools that um, these different specialists will have. So, for instance, one has got to have people, uh, part of the diagnostic pathway in patients will be to undergo endoscopy. Uh, increasingly, we use technologies such as um, impedance testing uh, for measuring acidic as well as non-acidic reflux or high-resolution monometry uh, to help diagnose um, not only reflux but also distinguish it from some of the other conditions which, it can, uh, which can mimic it. So, for instance, um, we, we can use these technologies to diagnose patients who've got non-acidic reflux, who in the past we would have not have made the diagnosis and would therefore not have had any ability to cure. And of course, those patients very often will not respond to PPIs and so will go, on tre uh, go untreated. Um, but also to other conditions where, for instance, um, uh, the treatments are quite different. So rumination syndrome uh, um, or, or achalasia or primary motility disorders of the esophagus, um, which could be disastrous if one ended up doing uh, surgery on those because of misdiagnosis. So access to that sp those specialists 
um, that expertise as well as the different technologies that we use these days uh, and um, people working together share uh, the same benefits as they do in the treatment of, of other complex conditions. Well the treatment options in reflux um, primarily are around treating symptoms. So a lot of patients, of course, um, will benefit simply from changes in their lifestyle. So losing weight, uh, avoiding the sort of foods which particularly can uh, either increase the pH of the stomach or relax the lower esophageal sphincter. So things like fruit juice, for instance, white wine, champagne, if you're lucky enough to drink it, chocolate, uh, fat, um, smoking, all of these can contribute to symptoms. Um, Patients who suffer nocturnal symptoms then uh, very often will benefit from um, elevating the, the, the head of the bed. Um, so these kind of lifestyle measures are always the first step. Now a sizable proportion of, the, uh, of uh, patients with reflux will not respond adequately to those uh, simple measures and it's those um, for whom medication is the next step and of course these days PPIs uh, are the mainstay. And uh, the recommendations are clear that actually patients um, very often respond idiosyncratically to different types of drugs or different kinds of PPIs. So uh, although pharmaco pharmacologically you can measure um, you know, different um, uh, acid suppression profiles in those drugs, um, the way that patients present doesn't always conform or reflect that. So you, it's well worth trying people um, with persistent symptoms on different drugs and that you may well get a benefit. Um, and, and then after, um, uh, after medication, many patients will either find that, they, that the, the medication doesn't work, perhaps 20 to 30 percent of patients who take PPIs will get persistent symptoms affecting their quality of life, um, and particularly patients with volume reflux, um, uh, with regurgitation to their throat and mouth, that will include that, gr that group. Um, and then many patients will simply not like the idea of taking drugs long term and with the in increasing evidence that actually long term PPI usage does have side effects, potentially increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease, uh, osteoporosis, hip fractures, gastrointestinal infections amongst others, a lot of patients are choosing to explore surgery. And um, the surgical options historically include uh, laparoscopic fundifications, uh, minimally invasive uh, procedures, um, the data for which um, several prospective randomized clinical trials have shown um, that actually five, seven years after surgery, uh, patients are better off overall than um, those treated with best medical therapy. Um, and then more recently, newer technologies including the, the LINX uh, device. The LINX device is a, a, um, a, a really clever attempt to um, uh, reinstate the normal physiology uh, of the lower esophageal sphincter it involves placing a small ring of rare earth magnetic beads around the bottom of the esophagus um, and the, they uh, provide a valve which prevents gastroesophageal reflux but then open uh, in advance of a propagated um, wave of peristaltic activity in the esophagus to allow food to pass into the stomach. And actually there is now five year data which shows that it's very efficacious, it is very effective and has a prolonged effect uh, at controlling both intestinal and extraintestinal symptoms uh, and it appears to be safe uh, with a low complication and uh, a low side effect rate. So it's a, a, an encourage, very encouraging new device, new technology which we think will help many patients.